I feel obviously emotional. It's emotional to be in. It's emotional to be in the courtroom when they're a talking about you in a way that is fundamentally counter to who you are, but also trying to include you within the scope of the law. And I think that I think we made our case really clearly and succinctly about why Title VII plainly covers us. I think. I was so proud of how many trans people were in this courtroom um, yeah. and how many trans people we brought with us into the courtroom to honor the fact that this has been a movement that we have been building for decades, for centuries, and that, a movement that we stand on the shoulders we of. We stand on the shoulders of so many of so many lawyers who came before us, and even more importantly than that, so many people who lived and died in the streets, and we carry them into the courtroom today, and I feel like really honored to have been a part of this. and grateful that you all were there and that we were able to be there and that there are all these people out here who slept overnight who you know showed up to say that no matter what happens we will continue to exist and that is what matters um, and I think that we we can get five uh, to agree with us on that. I kind of was thinking like you said it like we might have our fifth <laughs> which is crazy um I just it was just too I was so emotional. At one point, I was like, this is history. This is the first time the Supreme Court is speaking the name trans, saying transgender um, in, a, in, a, in a case, in a trial, in a, in a hearing. And I just was overwhelmed by that. And um, when Justice Breyer said that when the Civil Rights Act was enacted in 1964, it was about acknowledging that there were people who have always been, been here and have been shut out of, of the realm of legal protections. And and then Justice Sotomayor said, how much longer are we going to allow this discrimination? Oh, yes, that means How too. Yeah, much that means longer too. are we going to allow this discrimination? What is the court's role in this? If it, No, we're not legislating, but we acknowledge that there are people being discriminated against. How not it our job to like get rid of that? And that was... That was so powerful. Yeah, I agree. I really appreciate, too, the reminder that yeah. sex should not play a part in whether we're hired or not. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It, it, exactly. And when Amy was fired, it wasn't because yeah. of her performance. It was because of a person. Yeah, that's right. And it's as simple as that. It's and really simple. And when you and to have the sort of bathroom panic <laughs> walking to the Supreme Court was, was sort of terrifying and horrifying to um, witness. But what was so beautiful is the justices immediately shut it down and said, well, this case is not about that. We've actually heard for an hour and a half that this case is not about any of that. And that will have to be decided in another situation. And I also loved when Mr. Cole said, there are trans people in this courtroom. I went to the ladies' room at the Supreme Court earlier. I stood in line. I went to the bathroom. The world did not end. Like, everything's okay. Because I, I peed and it was fine. Yeah. But that is not even the question before the court. The and I have, is, yeah, exactly. I have multiple times gone in the men's room next to Noel Francisco, the Solicitor General of the United States, in multiple contexts, because that's what happens. People go to the bathroom and trans people exist. Yeah. Yeah. You make the world better. I think so. <laughs> I love you. I think so. <laughs> we are strong. We